thank you for joining me today. I am in Rome, Italy. I've spent the last four weeks in Italy and I saved the eternal city for last. Rome has its own incredible and unique food culture and I'm ready to dive into that with you guys today. Let's go. Especially when you only have about two or three days um, in the city, it really pays off to stay somewhere centralized. Like, we're staying in the Monte neighborhood, very close to the Colosseum, and we've been able to walk to all of the sites. We haven't had to take any kind of transportation. I wanna show you guys my coffee shop right downstairs. It's like literally 50 feet away from our front door. It's perfect when you're going to your sites, you walk up into a coffee shop, you can order your espresso or your coffee and have it right at the counter. It's also cheaper that way, they don't charge you as much if you're going to sit down. So there is a price difference, but it's very welcoming. Walk up to the bar, order your coffee, your breakfast snack, and you're good to go. And ask for your coffee al banco, so you know you'll just be having it at the counter, as well as your breakfast or whatever snack you're going to have. Oh, that's good. I'm also wanting to try a maritoso. This is a classic Roman pastry. And and it's a sweet dough filled with cream. I feel like there's really no right way to eat this. It's gonna be messy no matter what. That's good with cream, but I realize I'm gonna have to take a bite out of this if I wanna get some of the bread. Wow, that's really good. I wasn't sure if the bread was gonna be a little bit more savory, but it's nice and doughy, not dry at all. And then that whipped cream is sweet and delicious. It's actually a really nice uh, pastry there. I like that. It's so simple. Look at this super fluffy cream in here. And that doughy bread, it's like a donut. It's so good. It's perfectly sweet. It's easy to see how pastries like this really stand the test of time. The first rendition of this pastry was with no cream. It was with raisins and honey. It actually evolved into kind of like a Valentine's gift. Um, prospective husbands would give it to their bride-to-be as a gift, uh, a bigger version of this. Can you imagine even a bigger bun with whipped cream and then a ring or a little gold object in it as a present. So that's actually really cool. The name Maritoso translates to hubby or marido. The baker just let me know that everything except for the maritozo that I just had is gluten and lactose free. We're at La Bocaccia to have pizza al taglio, the classic pizza in Rome that you cannot miss. It is pizza cut by the slice and weighed. The first one I'm trying is kind of like the most pure. It's al rosso, which is just the tomato sauce and the bread itself. But look how crunchy and thin this crust is. Listen to this. That has such a nice crunch sound to it. I can't wait to try it. Mm. Oh, wow. That tomato is thick, almost like tomato paste. There's just a little bit of softness in the crust right here, and then this beautiful crunchy bottom. It's such a simple combination, but when the tomato's really good, it's all gonna be really good. Let me show you this other one that I got. Check this out, this is their mushroom with mozzarella, and uh, I guess it's got like some parsley on there as well. Very different from the rosso, a little bit more complex in the toppings as you can see, but look how thinly sliced those mushrooms are. You can really pack on a lot of toppings without the pizza becoming flimsy. It's got really nice structure to it. Look at this crust on the bottom. When you order it, they'll cut it and then they go ahead and reheat it for you so you have it nice, hot, and fresh. This is a good corner here. Mm. <laughs> Instantly, the flavor of the mushrooms is so good. Wow. Mm. Don't take this the wrong way, but this is like when you've had really good pizza and the next day you warm it in the oven or on the pan and it gets crispy and the cheese just melts perfectly the way you were hoping it would and the toppings are still delicious. This is kind of like that, but here in Rome it's made intentionally this way and it's made to be crispy and crunchy but juicy on the top. It's perfect. The last one I wanted to try was their potato one and this is kind of like unconventional, right? Like when do you really get potato on pizza and even at that it's almost it's like a gratin. It's sliced thin and layered and it's got uh, rosemary, olive oil, and I don't even think it has cheese under here, but that's going to be so good. Mm. Mm. Whoa. 
Totally different from the other ones. Delicious. Look. See how the potato's crunchy on the top, but soft and cooked well on the inside. So you're not getting like this crunchy potato. It's almost like the perfect French fry. Mm. So good. Roasty flavor, the rosemary. You have to use the right herbs for the right vegetable. Here, rosemary is the king for potato. That's excellent. Mm. So good. This is such a fun thing to eat. I can see why it's so popular. And they make it really good here. Wow. I wanted to try a classic Roman bread. It's called a rosetta. And this place, Zia Rosetta, is producing sandwiches with that exact roll. Let me show you what this looks like. Look at this beautiful bread roll. It's a flower-shaped bun, and it's got this wonderful powderiness to it, like a very savory, traditional, rustic bread. This uh, style of roll has actually been on the decline over the last few years. Zia Rosetta is clearly bringing it back with these beautiful sandwiches. Look at that. Wow, look at this cabbage. Okay, so I got mine with red cabbage, porqueta, and yogurt. Look how delicious and juicy that looks. Mmm. Wow, that's good. The tanginess from the yogurt is delicious in this. I'm getting that pork. That's seasoned really well. I'm getting rosemary, maybe some thyme, but the pork is very moist and juicy. And the cabbage is adding that perfect crunch in there. The whole sandwich is warm, the cabbage is hot, and the yogurt is just kind of melting through all the layers. That pork is juicy and herbaceous, and the bread holds all this really well. It is kind of falling out, but the bread is not soggy at all, so you kind of have a, a thick bun, and then that rustic crust on the outside, which is perfect for sandwiches. Look at the layers of the pork in there, and all that yogurt. Definitely didn't skimp on the yogurt, which I love. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I gotta say, that's one of my favorite porquetas that I've had. It's one of the juicier ones, and I think that yogurt really helps it too. Wow. I'm at Sacripante for an aperitivo, a light drink that you'll have prior to a meal. Very common here in Italy. This place is actually an art gallery, boutique, and cocktail bar. It's so cozy in here, it's absolutely beautiful. I got a Negroni, it's got a wonderful color, it looks so refreshing. Mm. Made with Campari, it's got that nice bitterness to it, just a little sweet and the orange is fantastic. Before you've even touched down onto Italy, you've probably already heard of the four great Roman pastas. You have the Gricia, the Cacio e Pepe, the Amatriciana. Today I'm having the granddaddy of them all, the Carbonara and I'm actually at a restaurant called La Carbonara. This place is over 100 years old. Check this out. Mm. Mm. That really is the granddaddy of the pastas. Wow. The al dente spaghetti. And then you have this super creamy, rich, and decadent sauce. It's not a cream sauce. It's more of an egg sauce, like a hollandaise, without the lemon. We have the pecorino romano, which is a sheep's cheese. So it's tangy and a little sharp, sharper than a parmesan. Typically in the US, we'll see a carbonara with a white, almost alfredo sauce and bacon. Here, the traditional way is this egg sauce with the guanciale, which is totally different from bacon. Guanciale is what's traditionally used in these dishes because it's got more fat, it's from the jowl of the pork rather than the pork belly. Adds a lot more depth of flavor because of the fat content and it's so good here, but you're biting in and it's just got like this perfect crunch and then chewiness, like if you're eating um, a pork crackling and that pecorino just finishes it off with a nice helping of black pepper. It's perfect. Mm. Oh. So fatty, <laughs> that richness and the saltiness coming from the guanciale. It's not a salty dish on its own. The the salty is the pecorino and the guanciale. Another classic Roman dish that I had to have here is the coda alla vaquinara. That's oxtail stew. It's the oxtails cooked in a tomatoey red sauce. Look at how chunky and just delicious it looks. If you could only smell the aromas that are coming off of here. Mm -hmm. That's so tender and fatty. 
the oxtail normally has a lot of fat on it, but when you cook it well, it becomes so soft that it dissolves instantly. That is so good. And that red tomato sauce is chunky, full of carrots, onions, crushed tomato. They brought us some fresh rustic bread to dip and sop up all the sauce of the uh, oxtail here. Mm. That sauce is like a dish all on its own. I love this bread. It's really good. It's almost like a sourdough. All right, I am wrapping up my one month tour of Italy and this is my last night here so I have to finish it with the most classic Roman dessert and that is tiramisu. I got myself the classic flavor. You know me, I'm a purist when it comes to having something for the first time so I went over to two sizes. They are known to have the best tiramisu in Rome so I got their classic. They've only got five flavors. They literally have two sizes, the small one, which is the one I got, and then one that's a little bigger, their big size. But this is a perfect little to-go takeaway cup with a nice spoon, a strong spoon too. So you can definitely scoop that out without your spoon breaking. The people are super nice in there. And this is very soft. This feels like it's gonna be delicious. Look at those layers in there of sponge cake, the mascarpone cream, uh, some cocoa on top. Oh, and of course, there's coffee syrup in here. Mm. Wow. Okay. That is probably the best thing I've had in Rome. And this is definitely the best tiramisu I've ever had. That is excellent. It was worth the maybe six minutes I waited in line because they are quick. There was a line, so don't worry about it, it's fast. But that is so cold, refreshing, and the sponge and the mascarpone cream all just melt in together as you're biting into it. Oh, that's so good. And you know, utensils matter. This spoon is the perfect spoon for this dessert. This is so good. Mm. Wow. That is the perfect wrap-up to our food tour in Rome and the perfect wrap-up for my entire food tour through Italy. I cannot thank you guys enough for joining me on this wonderful adventure. I've had so much fun in Rome today trying all of the classic dishes. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. Leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from you and I can't wait to have more food adventures. I'll see you guys real soon.